What's up YouTube? Drew here and we are in a storage unit behind my office for the business with a customer. She's had this car for a couple years. She's put a ton of miles on it and now she has a whole bunch of codes and uh, this is the 2004 from the most re recent video. Happy birthday second generation Prius as this car is officially 20 years old. Um, so what we're going to do is take the hybrid battery most likely out of this one, throw it in the back of this and then take it to the shop to rebuild it. But I thought this would be a great opportunity to answer one of our best subscribers questions about what I use for a code scanner. And I know a lot of you have probably wondered the same thing. So the short answer is I use three. One, and I've already got it hooked up for you, is the Autel AL329. I use a Foxwell. Uh, this is the NT510 Elite. And then I have a copy. I have a copy of Toyota's official software, or maybe I don't, whatever. But um, these two do the, the vast majority of what I need. So first and foremost, this guy. It's very rare that I go to an auction and buy a car. I usually buy my cars online, uh, but quite often I'll fix a car and in, in doing so, uh, I have to disconnect the battery. And this guy is great to tell me one thing, both at the auction and after a repair. If I hit the I slash M, that's inspection readiness monitors or you know whatever you wanna say it stands for, but it has to do with inspection and it's the monitors, right? So this quick screen here is gonna tell you a lot. So the car has all these various systems in it. Um, like the misfire that makes sure the engine's not misfiring, the catalytic converter, the fuel system, um, that's a heated catalytic converter. Obviously it doesn't have that. It doesn't have a heated EGR system. It does have oxygen sensors. It does have an EVAP system. There's obviously something wrong that's preventing that from running its check. And I'll tell you what that is. That's basically fuel vapors from the, the tank, the gas in the tank are stored and burned later intentionally. If that system has a leak, this will fail. And so what I want to see is no check engine light there, no uh, malfunction indicator lamp, no diagnostic trouble codes, and no pending diagnostic trouble codes, right? So this tells me after I say disconnect a battery to fix something on a car, I click this button and if all of those are green, I know I'm going to pass inspection. Fun fact, New York State and California residents, you are allowed absolutely positively 1000% at the shooting of this video, December 6, 2023, allowed to have one of these incomplete. It cannot have failed. It cannot have check engine codes that would make it fail. But say you disconnect your battery and all of these complete except one, and that one is usually EVAP. As long as there's no diagnostic trouble codes and it hasn't failed for some reason, it's just simply incomplete, you will pass inspection. California residents, the vast majority of inspectors will deny that. And the reason is they get a few less points or a few points taken off of, I should say, their rolling point system for their inspection license if they pass it with one of these incomplete. The reality is they can pass it. If they tell you they can't, they are lying to you as long as you understand what I'm saying. And that is quite simply that all of them have to be passed with a check mark except for one can be incomplete. You cannot have any failures. You cannot have any codes that cause failures. So this one um, also, I'm gonna use uh, enter exit here, there we go. So we're just gonna see what this thing says about codes in the system. So uh, it's just saying reading system status here. Unfortunately, it's not particularly fast. So engine or the automatic transmission, we'll read that first. Uh, please tell me no codes. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, and we will go to the previous menu. This is the engine computer so it's going to tell us if there's anything wrong with like emissions okay so bank one is too lean that is really not good um i'm going to take a look at it for this girl even though it's not what i'm doing and this is a favor i'm not a repair shop um so we're going to go out of this system that was one of the two codes one of the two codes pending and then dollar sign seven echo bravo on this scanner is the hybrid control computer and I'm assuming it's gonna say P0A80. Look at that, and I didn't pull it first, I've just been around these cars way too long. So that is when it says to replace the hybrid battery pack. Unfortunately, this scanner isn't showing me and we might not be able to see the supporting code P3000 and then P30 blank blank, which would tell me which block is going bad. She's gonna get a complete um, replacement rebuild, so. It doesn't matter in this case. This her old cells will get recycled, and um, and the good ones identified and reused later. 
and the bad ones, I don't know, sent to Prius Battery Cell Heaven. So this is the Foxwell scanner. So I have purchased the Toyota software for this one. And this one is what I use to um, basically go into a, by the way, it can supposedly do JDM cars. Very sorry for the camera. We're going to go down to USA, SmartVin. This thing like clicks and make noises. It makes noises and takes forever. So we just got to go down to, it doesn't matter, 2004 or five. I believe it's a five because I've only ever had a couple fours. It does have smart key. I had to look down at the thing. So we're going to say with smart key and okay. And this really sucks. I'm so sorry that it's giving you guys a hard time with the screen. So we're going to go to diagnostics and we're going to do a quick scan and it is going to scan every, look at that. It says three fault codes. Well, actually, excuse me, those three would be uh, pending, current, and history. Um, but look at all these codes. I mean, this is, the other scanner had no indication. So far, we've got five codes. The other one, look at that. Now we've got eight. The other one said four total. So this is going to scan every single system. And uh, one of the other things it could do too, you could go into like, for example, the hybrid computer and you can get live data and it lets you choose um, specifically, it lets you choose specifically uh, which, you know, factors, which data you want to look at. And you can choose to look at like all the individual battery cells and their current voltage. You can look at graphs. And the other thing that I absolutely love about this scanner is you can purchase software for other manufacturers. I've purchased the Honda software. I just haven't installed it yet. I'm probably going to purchase the General Motors one, even though I'm not a really big GM fan. Um, Miss Jade, she, my that's my wife, by the way. You subscribers would know her because her car has been on here a lot and she's been in a couple videos having to do with JDM stuff. She uh, is well aware of Toyota's superiority in truck making, but she still wants an Escalade and, um, you know, being the kind of husband that wants her to have everything she wants, I'm going to try to make it happen. Um, but anyways, so now that that scan is finished, I'm assuming that this is going to be the exact same code it's just going to be shown under pending, current, and um, history. So let's just verify that. So current codes, if this is just the one, yeah. So that's it's. this is showing us the same data as the cheapy. Um, but let's go to hybrid control system and see how this is different from what the other one told us. Let's see here. Read codes. Current codes are what we care about the most. Ah, there's the P3000 support code. So the other one didn't even uh, didn't even show us that. So let's see if perhaps in pending it tells us the block. No. So, okay. And then history, maybe that gives us some info. Yeah, just the 3000. Eventually, like I think 3014 is block 7. Um, whatever. So eventually this would tell us what block is bad in the battery. But if you're watching this because you want to learn how to rebuild batteries, you got to go by more information than just that. Um, ask me how I know. I never wanted to get into batteries ever, but you know, it's part of being a Prius guy, I guess. Um, let's see here. So current codes, this should be A80. Yep. We'll go back. Pending should be the same thing, but Let's check. And then obviously the uh, history code is the same. So, and as you see here, this got a whole bunch of codes we don't even, we didn't even know about. Like for example, the ABS and track system. Hopefully she doesn't have a problem with the ABS um, thing as well. If that's the case, I'm just going to recommend she trades this car in and I'll send it to auction and get her top dollar for it. Let's see here. Front speed sensor for an object attached to front left-hand speed sensor. So that's an easy fix, no big deal. Um, and I guess I can offer her to fix it if there's time. But uh, so yeah, so this is, I'm going to try to get you guys, you might want to see some of that live data too. So I don't want to, actually I do want to exit. And I want to go to control modules, hybrid battery control system. And I'm going to go down to live data. And because the car is not running, you know, I mean, you guys, of course, if you're watching this, this is not to teach you car diagnostics. Shoot, I mean, I'm the last guy you want to learn from, too. It's where I struggle the most. I'm a fabricator. 
a parts changer. Um, I can diag. It's just where I, you know, struggle the most. Um, so let's see. We would all data would show you everything in this system, but we go to a custom list. So, and by the way, this button. There you go. So battery block voltage. So you get the idea, right? If you select all the blocks, all 14 blocks, which I'm not going to do, um, you know, this will show you the voltage at each individual block. So a lot of very good information. You can click graph uh, and it'll show you that, unfortunately. Let me see here. It's, I wonder if there's a way. Yeah, so this shows you each individual block. Let me see. We want to merge graphs. So there you go. So that's multiple, let me see here, multiple blocks on one graph. So there's a lot of data that this thing can give you. I mean, this is OE level diagnostic information with an absolutely horrible user interface. Um, but it works. This was like $160 and it's $80 for every manufacturer of software you want to put on it. Like to add Honda was 80 bucks. I just haven't, you know, taken the micro SD card out and done it yet. Um, you know, I mean, a $3,000 snap on scanner is absurdly better, but I mean, guys, remember what I do. I, most of what I do is Prius. I hardly ever take this thing out of the drawer. Um, you know, and I'm not a repair shop. I buy my cars. In fact, I'm going to shoot a video about how I buy my cars. You, you got just a little bit of a preview when I told you when I'm shopping for a car in person, I check this. But when I buy a car online, I know when I buy it that it's a good car. It's not, I'm not going to need this. This is for disaster control. If you're a repair shop, see, I'm, I'm a dealer. I buy cars. I make them as perfect as possible, and I sell them for, unfortunately, a small profit. But, you know, whatever. That's a lot I've chosen in life. If I was a repair shop, Every car that came to me would be a train wreck, right? So I would need the best thing I can buy. This is not my, my most important tool. My most important tool I don't have yet, and that's a lift, just to do things like brakes and tires and stuff, right? Um, my most important tool is a computer and cars.com and the ability to sit in front of a customer and explain these cars and work through their, their terms and, you know, overcome their fears, you know, not to plug our business, but, you know, we have a five-star Google review with like 85 reviews on it. We don't abuse people. We don't pressure people. So like, those are my most important tools. I own a car dealership. I'm not a repair shop. Um, for you DIYers out there, like spend the money and get this. If you love Prius, um, yeah, there's the Dr. Prius app. There's all that jazz. This is an OE level scanner. So in my home, my wife has a Honda Odyssey. I have a Toyota Tundra. And then we have a bunch of other cars where this isn't going to apply. Well, the 2001 Camry convertible, this applies to. Um, but like all our collector cars are not OBD too. Um, you know, but maybe, you know, you're a husband with a Prius and the wife has a Honda CRV or whatever. Uh, I absolutely recommend this. Hopefully this video gives you a little bit of insight into how it works. Again, this was for one specific subscriber. I appreciate you. I value you. Your subscription means a lot to me. And for the rest of you who found this entertaining, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. This is a big time Prius channel. Don't go based on this video. There's a lot of content on here, how to fix, um, you know, exciting content, showing off cars, things like that. It's more than just, um, you know, a quasi review of a scan tool. So uh, anyways, I hope this helps. And again, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. It means a lot to us and it helps the internet help other people find our content. So God bless you and take care. Bye.